MT family, welcome back to the Mr. Tando Show. If today's your first time, welcome. I'm Mr. Tando and this is the Mr. Tando Show where we interview everyone that is dope, right? If you're new here, please do subscribe, like this content and make sure you comment so I know that you're here, you know, don't let me down. Now on today's episode from home, I have a gentleman that has traveled around the world. If there is any event that requires a host, I'm sure he was there. This guy had his own sellout show at the O2 before I was even allowed into the O2. That's how long he has been in this game and he's been killing it since. So yo, people, get ready for the amazing Eddie Caddy. You know, mom, they just say, you know, you know they, they're scared to come to the house. They're not sure what you're gonna do. And my mom was like, well, you go and tell John, Harry, Sebastian, and Innocent <laughs> that we in Africa, we speak like this because in school, we learned how to speak English in capital letters. You tell them. <laughs> how are you? Bro, look at me. <laughs> Eddie, listen, I don't know what it is here. Yeah. Lockdown has not changed you, bruv. People no, have bro, aged, bro. people have got gray hair. You are still looking fresh. Bro, listen, they try, they've been trying to lock me down since Congo, you know? Don't get this twisted. How do you think I ended up in the UK, bro? Because I heard of that. lockdown. I <laughs> this time we came to this country in the first place. <laughs> if you ask your parents how they ended up here, they'll say because of lockdown. <laughs> bro, I I'm, I'm not going to lose, bro. The older I get, the younger I get. You Come on, why not? Your skin is looking sweet, bruv. Thank What's the bro, skincare? Bro. What's the skincare? Oh, no, Jesus Christ. Jesus I hear that. I hear that. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Daily lotion. application. You can't find any super jugs. <laughs> Come on. Finding Tesco's. That's it. Come on, my brother. Come on. Come peace, on. Come on. <laughs> now, Eddie, how you know, how have you been? Obviously, this is this has been quite a difficult time for, for a lot yeah. of people, that yeah, especially yeah. the creatives. We, we I'm a I'm a creative now, isn't it? So man, we yeah, yeah. we've been hit hard. You know, we're not out, we're not gigging, yeah. we're not touring. Well, you're not touring, I ain't toured yet. Jesus, I'm waiting to tour. I see what you're doing. Amen. For Eddie. Amen. I see what you do for Eddie. Amen. God, if you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> but I see, I see, obviously, what's it been like? What's it been like? What's, what's the real um, changes? Bro, we're called creators for a reason. You understand? Like we, we are the people, because you have to understand, yeah, we've been hit hard, but people have been hit hard over, uh, you know, from the beginning of time, and that's where creators kick in. We, we directly or indirectly have been able to actually give peace and laughter and joy to a lot of people that go through hard times. So actually, this, opportunity, this has become an opportunity for us to actually help ourselves as well. You know, let's, let's, let's get as creative as possible during these hard times. And for me, I've always been a person that's never restricted myself to just stand-up comedy or, or, or just hosting um, shows or just presenting. You know, I've tried to kind of um, expand as much as I can, especially when it comes to uh, our continent, uh, you know, the motherland, Africa, and the different things that we can do and contribute. For me, as, as, as creatives, that's, we're called creatives for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, um, our job is to make sure that, you know, we... We allow people to be as joyful, as happy as they can be, even during hard times. So now we've reached a moment where this situation has hit us hard as creatives, and we've got to kind of look after ourselves as well. So for me, fortunately, I've always, I've never always, you know, been restricted to just being a stand-up comedian or just presenting or being a host. You know, I've also applied myself to things that actually concern the continent, the motherland. So yeah. during these times, I've been able to kind of expand and uh, and do things that I've not had time to do, like work with NGOs like the African Union, the World Health Organization, um, you know, most recently as well. But at the same time, it's just finding peace, man, understanding that you can plan ahead and not panic too much. But it's been hard because the bread and butter has been taken away. That's it, that's it, that's it. But you're still looking sweet. So obviously money's still flying. When you're sitting, look, look, your penthouse, bruv, I can see a crowd from here, bruv. So obviously- <laughs> Yeah, listen, let me tell you something. Money's not flying nowhere. Do you know yeah. what it is, yeah? We've got to all, we've got to survive with what we've got. I'm yes. telling you one thing for sure. If money was flying, you see me in a helipad landing in Congo, Kinshasa, bro. That's what's going to be happening. But one thing I know is that the passion that we have for our industry is what sustains us. Times get hard, man. The reality of it is, you know, people can sit down on social media and make it look like they're doing okay. But actually, if you have family, you've got friends, you're right. But in general, times get hard, bro. When money stops coming in, you've got to get creative, just like me. You know, like I'm not, I'm not out there um, making money like the Chris Rocks and the, 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 the Will Smiths of this world where things, when times get hard, you suddenly can just chill. We're yeah. still grinding. We're still trying to become a global phenomenon. So yeah. the reality of it is, is this is the opportunity to actually plan. Take a deep breath, don't panic, and actually plan instead of looking at the negatives. 
Yeah, of course. Now, Eddie, I want to take it back with you, like kind of all the way back, which is which is a long time. Yeah. Now, obviously, you 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 came to the UK um, very young from from yeah, Congo, yeah. Your, the the motherland, yeah. and you're very passionate about Congo, and we'll, we'll get into that and your works in Africa. Um, so, firstly, what actually made you want to be Eddie Caddy? Obviously, that's your name, but you know what I mean by the, yeah, the personality. Yeah. Um, that's a good question, man. I think it was such an organic process. Mm. You know, I, I grew up in a normal household. Um, my mum is a very strong Christian. It's a Christian household, of, of course. Um, you know, my, my mum actually was the reason why my dad became a strong Christian. So I grew up in a church, uh, Congolese community. I went to, you know, I was secondary school, ended up in college, went to university, Kingston Uni, you know, mm. just like a normal guy. But it's when I got to um, Kingston University and we put together showcases. So I was part of the African Caribbean Society. Yeah. So, you know, you, we all know about ACSs and I, at one stage I became president and we put together a, a, a talent show. Mm -hmm. And this talent show, I, I hosted because it was fun. You know, I, I, I liked the idea of hosting. I was really used to being part of debates that were put together at, at, at the university and stuff. So during this showcase, the reaction that I got is what propelled me to the, the sort of what you would call the university um, medium, you know, or community. And I became kind of, you know, the local uni celeb because I started getting booked at different universities to host. But during that time, I was just a host and it just happened to be, I just happened to be a funny host. My yeah. stand-up didn't come until I finished university. I had a job. I was still kind of performing in between the jobs. And I got sacked actually because I was taking too much time off work because I love. It, it would be Eddie, I wouldn't love it? <laughs> for less, bro. I love performing for less money, bro. Like that's that's how crazy it was. Like I love performing for less money. And my boss said, "You gotta go." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is this is too. Where much was you end. working at the time? That what, pardon? Where was you working? Where did you get sacked from? At the time, I, I was working for a company called Webs. Which, that's the company that actually still looks after my website and stuff. And oh, it wow. was a more it's a more immediate company. So mm -hmm. my boss is now my brethren. <laughs> wow. After myself, yeah, man. Um, so but it was I, I did need a technology, so I would edit for the company, and they had these things called business um CD cards. So you it's basically they look like business cards, but you can actually pop them into a computer and then your website will pop up and all that stuff. So wow. I used to edit um, you know, the more immediate aspect of it, and then we'll now install it into these cards. So it was a nice job, it was it was cool, it was yeah. a great start, you know, after finishing university, but then once I got sacked, I had no choice but to now like really pursue this hosting thing. And just mm -hmm. one thing led to another. Like I was part mm -hmm. of a, a clique called Black Grey Productions with uh, Adeto Kumbo Yolela, known as T, who is the head of Black Grape, And of course, Yolanda Brown, who yeah. you know, has become one of the biggest saxophonists in the world. So, you know, we were part of a big entourage and like just performing and hosting turned into, hey, bro, you know, you should try and uh, go on stage and do these funny songs that you perform. And then that turned into me talking about these funny songs and talking about being African. And then Stand Up was born from there. So it was very organic. It was never planned. It just became fun. And then the fun turned into business. That's it. I remember I remember that one. I'm sorry, sir, but you cannot I pack your cup. Come on. And I've been following <laughs> you for time, bro. I told you I use all your jokes, my guy. Oh, I appreciate that, my brother. I love it. I love it. Throwback, real throwback. <laughs> yeah, proper. And and you know what? It's good that you know you, you've spoken about it because there's been a massive journey from that. And quite early on, probably about what, 10 years ago, maybe or so, maybe even even more, you 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 had your own headlining show at the yeah. O2. Now, I think that's interesting for two things, yeah? Firstly, even now, artists can't get the O2. They can't, they can't get into the O2. They can't even afford the O2, certain artists. But you were in the O2 very, very early on. Tell me about that. How did Eddie Caddy, had, not the Indigo, I, I didn't say the Indigo, I said the O2. <laughs> Tell me how that, because you know sometimes, if I say the O2, they might think, oh, he did the Indigo or Water Margin. It wasn't Water Margin, it was the O2, yeah? It's not Water Margin. Yeah, I mean, if you've done Water Margin, there's no problem, but... So <laughs> tell me about that. Yeah, I'm glad you could clarify that because a lot of people have chucked in that O2. <laughs> they could perform at Starbucks and they say, I'm a like the O2. I was, yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, come on. A little appearance with their guitar outside Nando's. Ah, the <laughs> like, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've stayed quiet about that. I've seen yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. But no, I appreciate that, bro. Do you know what? One word for you, Mr. Thunder. Audacity. Come on. Yeah, that's the, that's the word. That's the word that's mm. carried me throughout my entire career from doing the Mermaid Theatre at yes. Black Friday and 600 mm -hmm. capacity. And during that time, you know, it was maybe 
five months after winning Best Newcomer at the Comedy Awards, right? And people were like, it's too early for you to do a one-man show, man. You should, you know, just take your time. But we were audacious from Unitime. We didn't care. We had an African mentality too that we're here to stay. We've got things to do. You know, we want to achieve the things that we want to achieve, but we, were not, we weren't looking at no one else. You know, so from then, moving on to the Shaw Theatre, uh, you know, which was at Central London, King's Cross, next to the British Library. People didn't even know that venue existed, and we did that. And during that time, I performed with, you know, Diversity, who are now massive, massive deal. Yeah, you know, I, I performed with them, you know, with, with them early on. And then I actually took them with me to the Indigo 2. And we were like the first uh, guys to perform at the Indigo 2, because a lot of things, people don't realize it. The Indigo 2 was a, was a, a, a party venue, right? Mm -hmm. And... One fun fact is it was actually meant to be the after party venue for all the dates that Michael Jackson was supposed to do at the O2, right? So, of course, when Michael Jackson uh, passed, uh, sadly, that really became open to just anything. But we were one of the first to actually perform at the venue, right? And doing the Indigo twice uh, and, and, and it's kind of a three month apart and selling it out, like, I remember at the time, the team that I was a part of, they were like, it kind of reminds me, you see people like the composers now, you know, yeah. and I know you're connected to the guys and they're my brothers and I'm not just saying this. They remind me of, you know, uh, the people we were back then because mm. it was like, what are you guys doing? There's nothing like you. So who's going to come out to watch you? But actually, no, we're going to go for the big venue. We're, yep. gonna, we, we, we're not going to think, this is our plan. And mm. we went to the O2 and we said, we want to do the O2. The reason wow. why we wanted to do that because we realized that the way we're, we're going to be recognized outside of this bubble of the black entertainment scene is by breaking through. We're gonna, no one's going to come and call us. Mm. You know, it took it, it, it prior to that. You had Richard Blackwood who was on the, on Channel Four and all them stage, and that was a long time ago. So there was just this gap of where there's this massive black entertainment scene that nobody was talking about it. And we thought, no, we want to make noise. We were making noise at the Indigo. Why not? We went to the old team. They were like, yeah. Especially after the first Indigo, they were like, okay, guys. Don't get too excited. <laughs> yeah, let's get too excited. <laughs> Calm down. You know, let's, yeah. let's look at you selling out another Indigo and let's take it from there. Yeah. And we did. And that's when it became uh, a thing, you know. And I think also, to be fair, the old two at the time really wanted to be a bit more inclusive. Mm. Right? So they really wanted to make sure that they were seen to not just cater for a certain demographic or a certain ethnicity. They wanted to include everybody. And this was a great opportunity for them too. But them, they also believed in us. And once again, we I had a great uh, uh, sort of uh, support uh, uh, network and so many people were involved, you know, in putting this together. And so many people were involved in financially uh, when, it, when it came to cre uh, creativity and just in general. And it went from the management team you know, in Charlie Kenny and, and, and T and Yolanda, all the way up to the PRs and the, the Becky Lockets of this world. And then so many wow. people behind the scenes who also put their money down to support us. So yeah, that's what I was going to say, because it, it, it definitely wasn't free. Yeah, it definitely wasn't free. I can imagine. But you put it together and you showed that you could do it. And yeah, yeah. one thing that interesting as well is that you're still very relevant. How long was that show? How long ago was that show? 11 years. Going towards 11 years. Going towards 11 years. So 10 going on to 11 years. And 10 years later, you're still relevant. And what's different to maybe 10 years then to 10 years now is the amount of people that were in the space were not that many. There wasn't yes. as many people in the space. So Eddie Caddy could be Eddie Caddy. So how yes, has sir. Eddie Caddy been able to keep being Eddie Caddy whilst Eddie Caddy is in the midst of everyone else that's in the space, including me? I'm going <laughs> to continue the pattern of the way you asked, answer that. Eddie, question. the phone that's is ringing. A, the phone is I mean, ringing. The phone friend, is not, ringing. Not on my side. I can't feel nothing. I'm still Eddie, ringing. we're going to stop you right there. We're going to go into Tando Trivia. <laughs> and he's oh, like, no. Now, guys, just to let you know, for those at home, before the interview, Eddie kid. said to me, please don't do Tando Trivia because he's rubbish at tri tri trivia. Tri tri trivia. But it's fine. We're going to do it anyway. Cool. So, Eddie, Tando yes, Trivia. Sir. And hold that point, because I want to come to that, about how you stay relevant. Yes, That's sir. really important. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. You're going to have 45 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Eddie, if I ask you your surname, you're going to know it, bro. No. That's not, no. I don't think that's how you say it. Let's go. Let's okay. Go. If you know the answer, you can just answer it. You don't need to wait for all the multiple choice, um, um, for me to say okay. all of them. You can just answer it if you know it. But if you want to hear all of it, then you can. 45 seconds. Cool. Yeah. You ready? Your time. Ready. Starts 
Now, in your Lenny Henry appearance in 2010, what color were your trainers? A white, B red, or C black? Red. Correct. In what year did Ghana gain independence? A 1967. Correct. What artist sang kidhood to adulthood? Was it A Bashi, B Sway, or C Kano? Bashi. Correct. Mercedes is manufactured in which country? A Italy, B Germany, or C Russia? Germany. Correct. In what country was the first Afro nation held? A Portugal, B Ghana, or C Nigeria? Portugal. Correct. What was Burn of Boy's first single? A Like to Party, B Wonderful, or C Nobody? Like to Party. Correct. What's the name of DJ Khaled's first son? A Ishmael, B Assad, or C Ali? Assad. Correct. Finish the line. Don't bite the hand that A hits you, B annoys Did you. you. Correct. And the last one is what is the capital of Japan? Tokyo. A Osaka. Correct. I'll give you that one. I will give you that one, Tok. Are you making me work that bad? You weren't. <laughs> Look at the way he's smiling. Eddie, guess how much you got, bro? Talk to me. Eight. Bob. <laughs> you killed it. You know what it is, yeah? It's very clear. The Lord lifts those who humble themselves. That's Rebecca, it. I can't help you. That's it. Eddie, I've even got better news from you. Talk to me. It's not eight, it was nine, my bro. Oh my <laughs> days. Oh my days. So I've equaled the record. Is this what you say to you? You have equaled the record so far. I'm not gonna lie to you, yeah. From the moment we left Congo, I think this is the reason why my dad wanted me to come to this country. To achieve levels like this, bro. Oh. Levels. I can't. Now I you, 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 you haven't actually hit, you haven't actually cleaned the record. You're, you're second, actually, because one artist got, got a bit higher, but not I'm much. Happy for them. You're, you're all on the my, same level. You're all there. You're all there. World, Yourself, Shekinah, Bella, you're all there. You're all at the top. My brother, I'm happy for you to say that, but in my world, I'm in the record. That's all I it. need to know is I'm in the record. Come on. Come on. You got this. You got this. Now, that was a good start. But you see the questions. Come on. I've got, that were easy questions for you. You believed in me. I'm not going to lie. You did believe in me. I got you, bro. I didn't know you were going to remember the trainers, bruv. You really remember that Lenny Henry yeah, interview? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, Come that's on. A, that's, a, that's a special... Bro, that's a special day for me, man. Like, yeah. I'll never forget. Going on, Tell going me about on it. TV with Lenny Henry, Henry. I remember everything about the styling, the day, how we're getting there, being nervous, like, everything, bro. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Uh, do you know what? It was during the time where, of course, we, was, we were uh, promoting the, the Auto Arena game. So yeah. I've been on Soccer AM. I've been on Channel, uh, Channel 4. I've done Channel 5. And of course, then the legend Lenny Henry decides he wants me to get on his show. And I remember saying to the guys, nah, this is, this is about to be a madness. Because I've seen um, how it was before as well. Like, you know, the other shows and stuff. So he gets proper people on it. So on the way there, I was speaking to uh, my PR lady, Becky. And God bless her. And Becky was just like, Ed, listen, just be you. That's what she kept saying to me. Don't do anything. Just be you. Be normal. You know, this guy, he knows of you already. So it's cool. And when I got there, they had two other guests that were there, but these were big, you know, like guests like they're known as well. So I was nervous, yeah. but I just remember Eddie B yourself. So mm -hmm. once I came out, then I was looking out for fresh. You know? yeah. <laughs> People might look at the look now thinking, what was he wearing? But like, Eddie, I, I did that, I, that I, checkered I, shirt is got to go, bro. <laughs> listen, it's, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> I left that in 2009, bro. But at the time, that was the lick. Uh -huh. You know, those was fresh Adidas trainers, very fresh. Oh. That's my Adidas people, very <laughs> fresh, bro. So, so I felt comfortable. And them times, I had a bit of hair. I don't know if you saw, there was hair, you know? Yeah, yeah a little bit. The, there was a little bit. I was trying to do the mohawk thing. And then my hair said, we need to stop now. So, <laughs> but no, bro, sitting down, Lenny made me feel very comfortable. He came to see me in the change, in the dressing room before we went out. And that interview went a long way in actually pushing the tickets as well. It was just, it was just nice. And I still watch it every now and then just to make yeah. myself feel good. Come on, man. No, that was that was great. You just you just came rubbing shoulders with the big boys. And I remember yeah, he asked, yeah. he said, oh, so so why did you decide to do the OT? And he was like, you know, so I can sit here with people like these guys. And I was like, I yeah. kept to 100, bro. Come on. <laughs> that was Come the on. reality. That's why we did it. So we came yeah. rub shoulders with the big boy. Come know? on, man. No, that was that was great. That was great. And then you went on to do your, your TED talk. And I thought Eddie was going to come and give a serious TED talk like everyone else does. But Eddie said, no way. I'm going to make you white people laugh. <laughs> And they yeah, yeah, did yeah. laugh. Do you know what? The TED Talk for me, because I've watched TED Talk, and when they invited me to do it, I sat down and I thought, I'm, I've got to be me. Mm. Like, comedy is what made me. Bro. And my belief was, 
love is the best medicine. My belief was the talent that you possess is what's going to open doors. And that particular TED, uh, those TEDx is focused on new ideas for Africa. You understand? So it's like, for me, my new ideas was laughter, like using my gift and my purpose to, uh, you know, move forward the story of our continent. So coming on that stage, laughing was at the forefront. It was about laughing. It was about talent. It was about me becoming a comedian, my parents seeing a new realm, even though before they didn't see how this is going to sort of work out. So that's why I went on that stage and made sure it was, I told my story to inspire people about this is how you can use your story to move forward. Yeah. Now, just, just looking at your and listening to your comedy as well, you very much talk about home. You know, yeah. uh, one of, one of, one of, you know, when I look at, you know, a lot of your work, array of your work online, the ones that really draw when you're talking about the struggles coming to the UK when you was eight years old and, you know, your dad having that conversation and all of that is like similar to like Kevin Hart, laugh at my pain. You, you know, people are laughing at real life stories. So, so yeah. tell me, you've, you've obviously done a lot of work in Africa now and you're, you're very much a, an advocate for, for Africa. Why is it so important for you to bring or to, to continue to walk with Africa on your back? Because I, that's the best I could ever be, bro, an African. Mm. And what, what, what a thing to be. The, mm. the, 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 I read somewhere recently, and uh, someone said, thank God we in, inherited pain and, and, and sufferings and, and grafting from our parents because it's made us the person, the people we are today. You know what I mean? It was long, I don't quote me on that, but it's along those lines. And it's a, it's a beautiful thing because substance is what, you know, sustains the world, man. If you, if you have stories to tell, then you're contributing to the advancement of the world. And for me, coming from Congo, and so many people don't know uh, about Congo beyond, some people just think that's where the gorillas are. Some people just think, you know, uh, Congo, they drink on bongo, and they do not drink on bongo in Congo. I just want to make that clear. But they do but, eat in taba. Know, they definitely in Taba. That's what you call a virtual spud, my brother. Come on, my guy. <laughs> I got Taba. I got Taba in the fridge right now. But this is the thing, right? It's like for me, Congo being the eleventh largest country in the world, the second largest in Africa. You know, having the deepest river in the world. You know, one of the longest running river that can sustain electricity to cross the continent. You know, we are the richest country by soil in the whole world. My you know God, I mean come on, preach, minerals. preach. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, these are the things that people will never know unless I put myself in a position where I have their attention. So instead of people just looking at, oh, I can't go to Congo because of war, they don't realize that Congo covers most of West, Western Europe by mm -hmm. size. So that means if you're worried about the war happening in Romania, Kinshasa, where I'm from, is like in the UK. So mm -hmm. it's like there's so many different aspects of Congo that people don't realize. And once you realize that and understand how, you know, um, it, Congo birthed one of the guys who was forward thinking, like a Kwame Nkrumah. His name was Patrice Lumumba. They were really good friends. They yeah. were thinking about the liberation of Africa and the forward thinking of Africa. But in order for that to happen, I have to use my talent to get people's yeah. attention as a comedian. And once that happens, I kind of go, you know what, guys? Even though I've been cracking jokes about my country and the sufferings and all the things that you guys think about, he's, he's the reality of what my country is about. He yeah. has the good parts as well. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. that's what that's always been my thing. That's why I believe in gift and purpose. Mm. Now, obviously, you've performed on some big stages. Yeah, you've performed on some big stages. Do you ever get on stage and think, or have you ever had a time when it's just like, this is not going to work. This is, I'm struggling <laughs> here. This is a tough crowd. Uh, yeah. Uh, and if you haven't experienced that, bro, you have not experienced comedy, man. Ah, really? As a stand-up, you, yeah, what we call dying on stage, you must die at least twice. At really? Least. Like, especially on your come up. Yeah, it's got to happen. If a comedian comes and says to you that they killed every single show, hmm, I doubt that. The thing is, I, I actually remember um, there was a show that, this is just after the O2 as well, funny enough, mm -hmm. and I felt like the big man, you know, everyone's talking about me. And I think at the time that the BBC were shutting down in White City, so they were selling part of the building, right? So they had all these guys that will come down to kind of basically bid for it. So all these guys in suits, and it was a corporate event, and they booked me a few other comics. And I was second to last. So, you know, I was pretty up there. Bro, I was too confident. I was like, these guys are gonna laugh, it's me. And I got on that stage and I, I, the same jokes, you know, that I'd done a week before that were kicked, but it was just my attitude, how I went on stage, how I expected people to laugh, nothing. Like three minutes, nothing, four minutes. I heard a little sniggle, <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm in trouble here. You know, but one thing about me was I wasn't gonna cut my set short. I went through the whole set, which was about 50 minutes, mm. just so I can remember that. 
because I needed to understand why that didn't happen. And I realized afterwards, it, you could hear a pin drop. They looked at me and they thought, you think you're the big shot. Like once the audience has a warm up to you, it will be hard to get it. Like the audience have to love you. They, they have to want you to, to win. So they have to feel like you're one of them. If they feel like these guys got arrogant, it's going to be hard. It's like, it's like walking into a room and thinking, you, you know, you're the big stuff. Instead of saying hi to everybody and warming up and finding out how everyone's doing. And I learned from that, bro. That one there makes you drive home, but you start thinking about your life. <laughs> is this comedy thing even... Is, is it, is it, is it? If, yeah, you start so, questioning. <laughs> yeah. That, do you know what? What's Tesco saying? I wonder if Tesco got that job I had when I was 16. Because <laughs> that way, they, you know what I mean? You can't go wrong stacking shelves. Yeah. What's what? You literally start to become so ungrateful mm. because your, like, your confidence goes down, bro. Down. <laughs> it's Out. a killer. It's a killer stand-up. But you've bounced back and was talking earlier about your, your relevance and how you've sort of stayed relevant in this space where so many other people have come into this space. What, what have you done personally? And, and going back to the way you asked that question, I love the way you say how Eddie Caddy has been able to maintain himself as Eddie Caddy during this time. Because I've maintained myself as Eddie, I've continued to be Eddie Caddy. The Eddie Caddy that people may, may have seen in 2005 had planned for 2008. The mm. same Eddie, Eddie Caddy in 2008 had planned for 2012. Do you understand? Yeah, and yeah. So for me, it's like, you know, I've gone from a caterpillar to a butterfly. And next I'm going to be a private jet. And that's just what happened, bro. <laughs> you feel me? Eddie, <laughs> please don't become a private jet. They'll say you're doing juju. Please <laughs> don't become a private jet, bro. Me? Uh, me? I'm going to be a private jet. Come on. This is, this is how we're supposed to be, bro. You know, like, because the idea is I have stories to tell. People see me as a stand-up comedian. Some people saw me as a guy who was doing funny songs in 2005, like Pounded Gem and Parking Attendant, yeah. you know? And then I moved on to that, and then people saw me as a guy who was just funny in, you know, comedy clubs, um, small comedy clubs. And then I became that host, and then suddenly, uh, you know, this presenter. So, but I, I am what you would say a storyteller. You know, and I, I have different stories to tell. And there's, and it's just about time. I've got stories in me right now that doesn't make sense to tell right now, bro. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. That will make sense in 2030. So it's just about, you know, just me becoming the person I'm supposed to become. Yeah. And that's why I'm still relevant because Africa will always be relevant. And yeah. you can't tell me that if they gave me a whole year to talk about Africa, that's not enough. If they gave me 10 years to talk about Africa, that's not enough. That's yeah. where my relevance stays. As long as Africa is still Africa, Eddie will still be Eddie. Come on. And do you know what? Like, Eddie, every time, you know, I, I've seen you, you've always been that bubbly Eddie. Eddie almost has no days off type Eddie. And, and I was speaking to, to Kojo, um, you know, and, and, and his sort of experiences on, on comedy and that. So how do you sort of handle days off? Because Eddie doesn't always want to be laughy, jokey Eddie. Sometimes I just want to chill. I want to walk into a, a, a private dinner with my friends and I don't want to tell jokes. I want to be left alone. How do you actually sort of deal with that? Because surely if you ever come into an event and you're not laughing or making jokes, someone will say, Eddie, is everything all right? How do you deal with that? You know what? You're, you're surrounded by... Um one or two people who have those answers do know me. Like, you know, in your team, you've got Steven. Steven knows. I've, I've spent a great amount of time with the composer. We've gone around the world together mm -hmm. and we've, we've had some real conversations about concerns, about mm -hmm. keeping it 100, um, about keeping it together, you know? And those things happen off camera, off stage. In order for me to be the person I am when I'm out there in public, I've got to make sure behind the scenes I've got the right people around me. I'm a family person, do you understand? Mm -hmm. I've got a three-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. People have never seen my daughter online because I choose for that to be the case. You know, the, the people around me, like those are that's my reality. I've got I've got real friends uh, who are not in entertainment, who live real lives, but we're in the entertainment business. Which means if I, as Eddie Caddy, as known as the comedian, and some of the best mem memories people have of me is laughter. When I step out my house, I'm not saying I'm going out there to be a, 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 a clown, but if I'm going to a, a, a sort of a industry event. I'm not going out there to try and be some big shot actor or some, mm. some guy who reads the news. I'm Eddie Caddy. That's who I am. It's a sort of persona that, you, you know, you sort of put on. But the, uh, the fortunate thing about me is most people will know is what you see is pretty much what you get. I'm a happy person. I've grown up in a happy home. I've always uh, been around happy people. Yeah, I go through atrocities. I go through madness like everybody else. But I don't think that when I'm going through a madness, those people who have nothing to do with my life on that level need to carry that. I've got people who have been assigned 
by God, like to be there, whether it's my parents, whether it's my brothers, whether it's my, my friends, do you know what I'm saying to you? So those people there, they take care of that. So when you see Eddie out there happy and bubbly, it's because there's a lot of people in the background who are taking care of me. And I'm happy, I'm so grateful for that. Mm. Come on, come on. Eddie, I'm going to go into a second game with you. Uh-oh. Yeah? <laughs> let me not get too, let me not get too, get too, too confident. Uh, too All right. Happy. This one is called Guess the Track. Oh, this is, this is... Oh, Bruv, you've been working with artists for life. Yeah, but don't do that. You're just setting me up to, just setting me up for, for an absolute failure. I don't, I've, not been, I've, I've been working with them so what? I've had them in the city when they're making these songs. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a line from some songs. You've yeah. got to tell me what the name of the song is and, and the artist, yeah? Very simple. Oh, mate. Oh, if you know on. it straight away, just say it. Go on. Yeah? All right, yeah, the first on. one. You're going to know this one. This is nice and easy. First one. If you give your heart to me. Skin time, Mr. Easy. <laughs> I'm not going to let you go. go. Come on. Well, I'm going to give you my time. Say, Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. This is very simple. Next one. You ready? Okay. No. She... Do you know what is weird? Because there's some Afrobeat songs, I'm trying to say it, not Afrobeats, but it doesn't make sense, but you get it anyway. All right. Okay, okay. Time is of the essence. I tried to teach you, but I might need some lessons. I need to give it all. I tried to leave, but I can't. <laughs> Let me tell you something here. You know? <laughs> you know when there's no beat? That's it. No, there's, it's not even on tune, bro. It's... Let me tell you something. Those who know me, yeah, I am dancing to the beat. I don't care what you're saying. You could be saying your father is your mother. I am still going to the shaku and I don't to I hear that. What song is this, bro? Give me the beat. <laughs> what? Time is of the essence. You've said the name of the song. Oh, I'll so you... what? Essence Whiskey. And Thames, that's a, I'm, and I'll tell you something, yeah? That's a new, I, I, I actually guess that it was that, but I don't know the lyrics to the songs like that. Do you know I, I hear mean? that. Do yeah. you know, as it's getting to, now the new you school Afrobeats, you don't even listen. That's Come I'm on. Like. <laughs> that's very new. That's new school Afrobeats. Yeah, new All school. Right. Right. Whiskey's album is banging though, that's for sure. 100%, 100%, 100%. Let me give you another one. I'll give you one more. I don't want to, I don't want to out you too much, yeah? I'll give you one more. All right. Can I tell you that I'm wanting you. I'm in love with the way you move. And I think you should have a drink or two. Truth is I wanna lie with you. So come my way. Eddie, I thought you had it. You was looking like you had it. Come my way. you. Rihanna, young thing. Come on. I see what you did there. So you have to get into the, you have to get into the river. I get it. I get it. I get it, bro. When I, when they come away, it came my way. So <laughs> I get it. I get it, man. I get it. So I, I knew you knew it. I knew you knew it. But you yeah, know, it's in me, man. It's in me, man. It's that's me. it. That's Somewhere. it. But this makes it so hard, you know, because it's about. It, it goes to show you how important producers need to get. Like they need to get seventy percent instead of this fifty fifty. Now I've realized because <laughs> it's the beat, you know, it's the beat. Because mm. the way you were saying it, dead song. <laughs> But then when you put the beat on it, you put the artist, what? you get the lights for the music video, then it's proper, bro. Bro, when you was reading it out, I fell asleep. It's only when I heard, come my way, suddenly the song, is like we resuscitated the song, we put a mask on it. <laughs> come on, come on, that's, that's it. Now, now, Eddie, quickly, what does yeah, success look like to you? Because I would say, others would say, Eddie is successful. Successful subjective, right? What I see is success is what's different. So for you, as Eddie Keddy, what is success to you? I was speaking to my boy about this a couple of days ago. Like, for real, for real. I, success for me looks like when I have one child now, but hopefully I'll have more, when my children can go around the world and they will be comfortable because of their surname. Mm. That's what success looks like to me, literally. Like right now, even my siblings, they can go to certain places, they can mention my name and, you know, they will be respected in a certain way. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Like my dad, some people call, you're Eddie Caddy's dad. That is all, like, oh, because wow. for me to be able to carry my father's family name 
and it is respected and it rings bells in certain corners of the world and people are able to show favors to those people are connected to that name. That is success. As long as that keeps happening, I'm happy with that. You're happy. So then you need to have sons that potentially will carry that name, right? So you want to have more yeah, children. Bro. Betty, when, when's, when's more children coming then? Bro, you're, you're going to like, you want to see my schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously that, <laughs> that means that you're, you're, you're looking to, to settle down. You're telling me that you're, gonna, you're yeah, basically man, telling me you're about to get married. Dude, What's going on? I want to get married. I want to get married. I want to settle down, my brother. Do you know what? Like, um, I remember you said to me, you said to me, when I get married, you're, you're emceeing at my wedding. But here's the thing, yeah? When yeah. I get married, you're not going to be available for that. You, <laughs> hey, gonna, no, no, I need to be available, You're going to be gone. I need to be available, my guy. But Whatever it is, bro, I'm turning it, it down. Taba, come and eat, Taba. But come it, you'll be, it'll be too much. You know come what it on. is? Like, where my bridges now are, yeah, yeah, bro, host my wedding. I'm like, no. <laughs> Eddie, do you know what? It don't matter. It don't matter if I'm booked because whatever happens, the reception is starting late. You're Congolese, bro. Yeah, you know <laughs> so it don't matter, bro. Even if the gig finish at midnight, bro, you haven't even done your entrance. Bro, you ain't... I'm walking in with my wife at 5 a.m., bro. <laughs> bro, that's not the worst I've seen. Don't worry, bro. Oh, bro, we're walking at 5. We're going to be walking in with them pigeons from Trafalgar Square coming at the same time, bro. <laughs> Sunrise. But yeah, bro, I do want to settle, though, man. I want to settle... Um, I want to get married. I want to have yeah. plenty of children. Do you know what I mean? And leave that Come legacy. On. It's a beautiful thing, man. I, you know, I, I, I pray the Lord provides me with that because that is important to me. Amen. Definitely, bro. And, and Eddie, what's, what's next for you? Once, once we're all fully out of COVID, we're done. Yeah. I know Afro Nation is going to start and you're going to be busy. Bro, when you go yeah. to Afro Nation, you're there for days. So your yeah. bookings here in the UK, just text me, bro. Just say, bro, I'm not, go but there. You know what's crazy? I've actually said that I... I want to send this stuff to you. It's, it's there You've been you, saying you want to send this stuff for two years. I'm but still waiting. But you know waiting. what you need to do? I'm not going to lie to you. You know what you need to do? You need to be on my back. I you're making too much money that you ain't got, that you're dead. You'll be wearing waistcoat and some linen in, in Greece somewhere. And the next thing I see you, Papua New Guinea. <laughs> them, them countries there. What am I <laughs> them countries that people don't know. Papua New Guinea. Them <laughs> that people don't know about them. Lesotho. You'll be in them countries there. No one knows about <laughs> Seychelles. Come on. So, Seychelles. You need I to need keep, to go there. Keep, keep your tabs on me because I'll be like, wow, big man. I just received this email yesterday, you know. We said, I've got you. Come on. I've got you. The thing is, like, because, bro, if I do one of your gigs, that's my monthly salary, bro. Just one. Look at your life. Who told you this? <laughs> Listen, but no, but you know what? When the doors open, there's a lot going yeah. on. Um, I, you know, looking forward to Afro Nation opening up again. I recently um, took part in an amazing festival that uh, happened in Ghana in Accra called Upfest. And yeah. it was a social distancing, COVID proof party. You know, it's a beautiful thing. And uh, we're looking to make that bigger as well. A big shout out to my brother, Alvin, who's doing great stuff in Accra as usual, and, and the rest of the team. So those things are happening, but of course, radio um, as well. And there's a couple of situations happening in the background, my brother, um, that hopefully, you know, will, will uh, advance the cause even more with, with, with Mr. Eddie Caddy. So I'm looking forward to that, man. Come on. And Eddie, before I let you go, if there was one bit of advice you can give to anyone that's trying to get into your space, what would that be? It's never changed from when they asked me this. From the moment I started to understand what this um, this game is all about, um, it's, it's, it's two things that they're kind of linked up. A, people say this all the time, but it's so important. Be yourself. Your story is one story. It's like, literally, nobody can tell your story about you. You were sent here and assigned to this world to tell a story, to open up people's eyes in a different way. So, like, be yourself. But in saying that, People will advise you based on their limitations, mm. right? So if you are sitting there, you're like, you know what, during this COVID, I want to start interviewing people, man. And, I, you know, I, I, weddings aren't happening. Events are not happening. And the whole thing has dried up a bit. I want to start interviewing people. And people are like, yeah, but bro, people, you're not known for that. You listen to that. That's based on their limitation. They don't see themselves being able to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying to you? 100%. You've got to do things based on your limitations. And actually, we have no limitations. So never take advice based on other people's limitations. Come on. Thank you so much. If the studio Anytime, crew were here, bro, they'll be clapping for you. But just for it, studio crew makes a nice Eddie Caddy. Rob, it sounds so empty. It sounds so empty, Rob. Thank you so <laughs> much for coming on, Eddie, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. pleasure. And you do not go anywhere. Stay right there. MT Family. On that note, 
It's been an absolute pleasure sitting down here with the lovely Eddie Caddy speaking everything from the start to the finish. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you haven't already done so, make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, help me grow, man. Come on, you said it. I'm Mr. Tando. This man right here is Eddie Caddy. This is the Mr. Tando Show. Peace. Come on. Hey, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs>